Welcome to this webinar. And in this LMN webinar, we're going to focus on LMN time in snow and ice contracts. So basically, how to use LMN time to better manage your snow and ice jobs and contracts. In this video, we're going to assume that you've already got a hang of budgeting and estimating for LMN. And we're going to look at how to set up your LMN time jobs and staff and settings to help you uh, better manage your timesheets, but also make your crews accountable to their snow and ice work and their logs and delivering better customer service for your customers, sort of real-time information about what's happening so that you can get them the answers that they're looking for promptly. The first setting I want you to take a look at is just the default lunch duration. Now we've set it up here. Usually it's set up for about 30 minutes. If your crews don't take a lunch in snow most of the time, probably want to want to set that to zero and that'll just zero out and it'll make the lunch uh, not applicable by default. If you do take a lunch, set it to 30 and just make sure the crews are clear that they have to clearly and accurately record what time they took lunch so that we can deduct the time from the right thing that they were clocked into at that time. So that's important. Uh, the other thing that may want to be changed on the settings screen is, is the payroll warning. So by default, and many companies for summer set this between eight to 10 hours. So give me a warning when somebody works more than eight or 10 hours a day. In snow, because of the longer hours, you may want to up that. You might want to set that to 12 or 14 so that it's not quite so sensitive to the warnings. The next thing you're going to want to set up, and I think it's really handy, is, is payroll codes. So Element Time can allow you to pay staff at different rates of pay based on the kind of work they're doing. For instance, lots of companies pay an employee a rate for summer work, like mowing or construction, and maybe that's $14 an hour. But then in the winter, they get a rate with a premium, maybe $18 an hour. Maybe they're driving a plow truck, or maybe it's just because the, the nature of the work, it's on call, it's at midnight, it's you know, all that stuff. They get a higher rate of pay for work in snow. What you can do is you can create a job type and a payroll code so that when employees are working on a certain job type, it will pay them an elevated rate of pay. So in the snow, they'll, they'll get a, a higher hourly wage when they're working on snow jobs. And when it exports this time to QuickBooks, it'll automatically pick up the correct payroll code for this job and pay the employee the accurate pay for any kind of work they're doing. What that really means in plain English is that if you have an employee who works in the shop and does some equipment fixing and that kind of stuff and then goes out and plows snow or it's at the beginning of the season and employees are bouncing back and forth between finishing up construction jobs and plowing snow, Element Time can make sure they get paid the right rate for the job that they're working on at any given hour of any given day and it'll change those rates automatically. Here's how this works. The first thing you're going to need to set up if you pay different rates of pay is a payroll code. So you're going to need this here in Element Time and you're also going to need this in QuickBooks. But for instance, I set up a field snow hourly and a field snow overtime payroll code. In QuickBooks, what this will mean is for each employee, they will that works in snow anyway, they'll need uh, a payroll code for their regular summer hours, let's call them. Then they'll need this field snow hourly code for you to tell QuickBooks what they make when they're plowing snow. So in the example I did earlier, if I had an employee named John Smith, maybe his regular field hourly wage is $14 an hour. His overtime would be time and a half that. So that's two payroll codes. Then I'd have to add a third one. And I would call this one hourly snow work, for example, or field labor snow or snow hourly, whatever you want to call the wage. And that would be the rate of pay John gets paid for snow work. Maybe that's $18 an hour. Then I would have field snow overtime. That would be 18 and, and overtime. So John would end up having four payroll codes in QuickBooks, his regular wage and his regular overtime, then his snow wage and his snow overtime. When LMN exports John's time, it'll make sure that if it's a snow job, he's going to get paid his snow rate. And if it's a regular job, it's his regular rate. Can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year um, if you're just currently rounding it. Here's how it's going to work. You set up your payroll code for snow hourly and snow overtime. Then in the job type section, you're going to see a job type called snow. Open this job and number one, make sure the weather comments are on. If the weather comments are on, it'll automatically uh, track weather on employee timesheets. That's unrelated, but a great setting to have on for snow. But as for the payroll stuff, go to the payroll tab for your snow job type 
and set your hourly wages to those payroll codes you created for snow. So field snow hourly, field snow overtime. So what this is saying is for any job site that is a snow job, pay the employees at whatever rates of pay these are for that employee. And obviously they can be different by employee by employee, but it's basically saying if they're gonna work on snow jobs, pay each employee at the snow hourly rate for that employee or the snow overtime rate for that employee. And once again, just to stress, John Smith might get 18 in snow. Somebody else can get 22 in snow. That's fine. You simply set that up in QuickBooks. So I'm going to hit OK here, and I'm going to jump over to the job section. So in the job section, if you want to open up a snow job or create a snow job, one of the most important things if you do pay your employees differently is that that job type is going to be snow. And this is what's going to indicate what the payroll rates are that, that they get paid at. So I've set Bear Cliff Mall up, it's a snow contract, as a job type snow. That means when it exports John Smith's time, it's gonna use the whatever payroll codes, let's go back to the settings, whatever payroll codes I've set up for the job type of snow. And in this case, it's gonna be hourly overtime, or field snow hourly and field snow overtime. And that's how it'll pay John the right rates. So back to our Bear Cliff Mall job here. Start with a name, uh, make sure it's the right type, and then give it a short name. A short name is just an abbreviated name for this job that'll fit on employee phone. It's got a maximum of 25 characters. That way they can see the whole name on their phone without scrolling to the right. Um, if you use job IDs, go ahead and set an ID number. If not, LMN will assign one for you. And then you've got uh, an address and links to things like street maps and site maps. If you're currently building snow binders and putting all those maps into a binder and giving them out to the crews and dealing with lost maps and replacing maps and updating the maps and all those headaches, uh, it's a great idea. Upload your site maps to something like Google Drive or Apple iCloud or OneDrive and then get the link for that document and put it in here. Once you have it in here, employees when they're out in their field can just click a button on their timesheet and it'll automatically load the site map for each site. And this is a sitemap I did using Google Earth and a tool called Snagit. And what Snagit allows you to do is just take a picture of your screen and then you can draw things on it. So I've shaded this whole area blue for area that we need to plow. My yellow areas here are areas that we pile. And you can put notes on here and you can color the walkways a different color. Whatever you want to do to the sitemap, um, you can do that here. And then I just upload that sitemap to my Google Drive, put my link to the map here and my employees can access it from the field. And now if I need to make a change to this map halfway through the year, scope changes, or we keep forgetting something, or what, I can add those notes to the job, let everybody know the site map has been updated and, and I'm not you know, collecting binders and replacing maps and worried about all. Anybody who's got the phone can just quickly, quickly hit the site map button and see that. Next up is tasks. And tasks are something that each employee or each company is gonna do differently. Um, tasks are what employees are going to clock into when they arrive to site. So don't think of a task yet as, well, we need to know if they did an inspection or they did salting or they did whatever. We can handle that later on when, they, when we get into activities. Tasks are just a way of, of organizing and tracking employee time on site. In most cases, if you have a, a truck that's driving in and it's going to plow the lot, and then it's got a salter on the back, so it puts some salt down, and maybe even the driver gets out and shovels a stairway or two, the best practice for that type of job would be to just create one plowing and salting task. To try to split plowing time from salting time from shoveling time means the driver would have to drive the plow around and then before they turn the salter on, pull out their phone and clock out of plowing and into salting. And then same thing again when they get out to shovel the walks. And there's an excellent chance they're going to forget that at three in the morning. And then the data that you're trying to track isn't even going to be accurate in the first place. So we can really simplify that by just having the driver clock into Bear Cliff Mall plowing and salting. If you have a giant property where maybe you've got uh, a crew on there plowing and you've got a salt truck that comes and does dedicated salting and you have a walkway crew that just comes and does the walks, then it makes sense to set up three different tasks. You plowing, salting, walks. Each, each crew or each operator is going to arrive on site and clock into whatever they're doing, but they're only doing the one task. So it's easy. 
you have somebody doing multiple tasks, it, it's probably not going to be very accurate to expect that they're going to keep clocking in each time they change a task. So keep it as simple as possible. Like I said, if it is a big job and crews have dedicated tasks, on the, then you can think about setting up different tasks, but keep it simple. You'll notice here I do have a second task though, and I do have one called removals or relocates. The reason I did this as a second task is because this one is billed by the hour. So what we're saying here is plowing and salting is our per push price or our contract price, however you've billed it. Removals and relocates though, we're gonna track that time for billing by the hour. So we're gonna bill the client hourly for work done here. That's why I needed a second task. I need to differentiate sort of contract or put push pricing time versus extra hourly time. So there's two tasks there. If the driver goes on their regular plowing salting walks, they're gonna clock into the first one. If the driver or somebody else goes to actually move snow around or to haul snow out, then they're going to clock into removals and relocates. We're going to bill that time by the hour. Now, how much are you going to bill them by the hour? That's why you need to set up hourly rates. Now, you only need to set up hourly rates if you have a task that's set as hourly. If all your tasks are no, then you don't have to worry about this at all. But if you have any task that's flagged as hourly, you're going to need to set up some rates. And here on this job, I've got a rate for hauling, a rate for loader and pusher, plow truck, skid steer and pusher, and the rates are set over here. Now the employees will never see the rates. So if you have an employee or even more importantly, a subcontractor working on this job, they're not gonna see the rates here. They're just gonna see the names of the rates. But you're gonna set these up so that when an employee clocks in to re relocates, it's gonna ask that foreman, okay, so what equipment are they using? And that's where the foreman would say, okay, this guy's on the loader and I'm on the skid steer. And it will bill each person's time accurately based on the rates that the foreman selected when they clocked in. And that's all that rates are. And again, you only need them if one of your tasks is set to hourly. Now, what about tracking? Did the employee do a full plow or a partial plow or a full salt or a partial salt or how many bags of salt that they used? That you're going to need to set up activity. And activities are just like a checklist that when the crew clocks out of this job, it's going to ask them, which one of these things did you do? And if those things have a billable rate, it will then prompt you to bill these jobs at the associated rates. So here at Bearcliff Mall, I've got three active activities. This one's inactive, which is why it's got the lines through it. My three active activities include a full plow, a half plow, and uh, an app of salting. So what's going to happen when a crew clocks out of Bearcliff Mall, so they're leaving Bearcliff, it's going to say, did you do a full plow? Did you do a half plow? And did you do an application of salt? The crew will tick off which ones they did. And if something is marked as track quantity, for instance, I could set up track how many bags of salt we used on the walkways, then they'll fill that information in. And then you'll have that information for billing. Once again, the crews will not see the rates that you set up here. They'll only see the names. So they're not going to know what you're charging. But when you run a report, you'll know what to charge. Here's just an example of how to add an activity to a job. I've got one here for full plow, half plow, and an application of salt. Let's look at how to add an activity to track how much salt we used on the sidewalk. I'm going to go down here to add activities. And here's a list of all my activities that I've already set up on other jobs. So you can see here, I've already created one called salting walks and by the bag. All I did to create this was go add new and I set one up called salting walks. The units is bags. And then I can say, do we want to track quantities? Yes. And is it billable? No, it's not billable. I just want to, if your salt is in, if your bag salt is in the contract, you just want to track how many bags we used. This is how you're going to set it up. It's not billable because it's already charged for in the contract. If you're charging by the bag, then you're going to set this up to say per unit. And you can say we charge 50 bucks per bag of salt as our applied rate. And then it'll say to the foreman, how many bags of salt did you put down? And you'll get a report saying you need to bill four bags of salt at 50 bucks a bag or whatever they used. So if you want to set that up, you can click OK. I've already set it up. So I'll add my salting walks per bag. And then again, I need to check off. Do I want to track the quantity? Is it billable? Or do I just want to track how many we use? And if it is billable, how much do I charge? Now, I might also add another activity for inspections. Let's say you have a site which demands that they know every time you went and did an inspection. 
So I could add a new activity here. And again, I've already added one, so I'll just choose mine, but you can add a new activity and I've called it inspection, okay. So I'll, I'm gonna add this one. Now in this case, it's an inspection. So I don't need to track any quantities. Um, I'm gonna set it as not billable. And then of course I wouldn't have a price. If you do charge for inspections, you could set that up. But in this case, I'm gonna go not billable. That's the more common. So when I hit okay, I'm gonna have two new activities on my list. I've got an inspection and I've got salting by the bag. When the crew clocks at a Bear Cliff Mall, they're gonna be prompted with this checklist of items and they're gonna tick off. So if a foreman just went and did an inspection, when they leave, they're gonna type inspection okay, or, or I'm sorry, click inspection okay, and keep going. If I went and did a full plowing and a full salting and I put two bags of salt on, I'm gonna go through and say, yep, we did a full salt, we put an application of salt, and I put two bags down. It'll track and record all that for you, and we'll show you that when we get to the timesheet section. Let's take a look now at what it's gonna look like for an employee who's clocking into one of these jobs. I'm gonna quickly open a job here called the uh, Delight Hotel. I've set up a link to a street map, a link to a site map. If I go to the tasks, I've got two tasks on Delight Hotel, plowing and salting or removals. I've got some rates set up if it is removals and I've got some activities set up as well. So I wanna track whether we did a complete plow and whether we salted the lots or salted the walks. Now, for those of you who bill by the, uh, li by the lift, for instance, plow zero to two inches, plow two to four inches, plow four to six inches, you can set these up as activities too. You can see here, if I go to add activities, I even have some samples set up. So plow one to three, plow four to six, plow six to eight, plow eight plus. You could set up these activities on this job and your employee or your subcontractor could actually tick off how deep the snow was as well. So you get really accurate billing. Other companies say, ah, that's too much information for the crews. We just wanna know that a plow got finished and we'll use the weather report to determine how we're gonna bill for it. So if that's the case, you're probably gonna set up something like this, plow complete, TBD stands for to be determined. We'll, we'll figure out in the office after how much to bill for that. And then I also have an activity called salting lots by the application and salting walks by the bag. So let's bring up the phone and see what that looks like for a crew, a crew who's gonna clock into Delight Hotel. So they're gonna click the clock in button. And right now they're currently working on a different site. So they're gonna pick the route that they're working on. Now you can route your jobs. We'll show you how to do that in a few seconds. And then they're gonna say, I'm at this route and here now I'm at Delight Hotel. Then they're gonna go next. It's gonna say who's in your crew. So if it's a one man crew, it's just gonna be Sam there. If he's got somebody with him, he can tick that off as well. Next, now what are you doing at Delight Hotel? Now I've only got two choices, plowing and salting or removal and relocates because when we set up the job, we only gave the employees two options at Delight Hotel, it's plowing and removals. That way it's gonna be really difficult for them to screw up the way you want this job cost and tracked. So I'm gonna pick plowing and salting and I'm gonna go next and it's gonna, auto, it's gonna automatically look for notes, actually, before it brings up the time, it'll look for notes. If you wanna make a specific note for a job, you just go to that task and write something in the task notes. For instance, I've got this note here that says use extra salt around the entrance. Um, I may have other notes like estimated plowing time, uh, four minutes, or sorry, 40 minutes. Estimated salting time, uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. You can set this up however you want. Anything that you want to give your, your crews in the field to help them do their job better and help you know tighten up your margins, uh, we can set that up here so that the crew will be able to see that in real time. Let's take a look at that now, what it would look like. So back to the employee's timesheet. I'm just going to go through the first steps again. They're going to clock in. They're going to clock into Delight Hotel. They're going to clock in the employees, pick the task they're working on. And now it's gonna bring up these notes. Use extra salt around the entrance. Estimated plowing time, four minutes. Estimated salting time, three minutes, 30 seconds. Now they've got a, a pretty clear accountability on what to do. They're gonna click okay to acknowledge that they read this and they're gonna clock into the current date and time. So very difficult to screw up things like AM and PM because the phone's gonna do that for them. They don't have to worry about that. Now, if they're at Delight Hotel and they don't know what to do when they're there, they simply click the magnifying glass button and then hit the site map. 
and the site map will open up. And I've got mine stored on Google Drive so that I can see exactly what I should do when I'm there. And there's a little note there not to block the bin. And the blue is the pile, the or the blue is the plow, yellow is the pile. Any person going there knows exactly what to do when they're there. Now that the crew's clocked in, they're going to hit OK and they're going to stay at the Delight Hotel and do all their plowing and their salting and all that kinds of stuff until uh, until they're finished the specifications of the job. When they leave Delight Hotel, here's what they're going to do. Once again, they're going to clock in to their next job. Their next job might be driving because they're driving to the next site. It might be the shop because they're done their shift and they're just cleaning up their truck or it might be the actual next job in their list. So they're going to go to job clock in. They're going to pick the next job they're working on. Let's say we had to circle back around to Acorn Plaza to do a bit of extra cleanup there. So I'm going to go next. I'm going to clock in the employees again. I'm going to pick the task I'm working on at Acorn. It's going to give me the notes about Acorn. So make sure to clear the loading dock, target salting, etc. And then it's going to do the, uh, the time and date that we arrived at Acorn. Now, when we hit finish, it's telling us, wait, we're closing one of the tasks here, Delight Hotel, plowing and salting. It knows you can't be working on two things at once. So since you're going to Acorn, you need to tell us what you did at Delight Hotel. And here's where the crew is going to be shown. These plow complete, salting complete, salting walks is coming from these activities. So at Delight Hotel, these are the three activities I have set up. It's like a checklist for the crew. On their phone, it's going to ask them, which one of these things did you do? And the crew is going to say, I did a plow and we did an application of salt and I put some um, some bags of salt down on the uh, on the sidewalks and maybe we put half a bag down. Now in the task notes section I can put whatever it is I want so maybe there was 15 cars in the lot and that might uh, be a reason why we didn't do a perfect plow and it's good to let the people in the office know or it could just be okay. It could be a very simple okay. Now my foreman's clocked out of Delight Hotel and into Acorn Plaza. Once they finished Delight Hotel, they, they indicated everything they did there while they were there. And now we have a record of it back at the office. And in fact, we have a record of it in real time. I'll flip back to the office now for a second. If I wanted to see how my crew was doing so far in the shift, I'm going to go to the staff section. And one of the things I can use is crew progress. So over here on the left, I'm going to go crew progress. I'm going to pick the supervisor that I want to track and I'm going to click the show progress button. And what it's going to do is on the right hand side, give me a legend and on the left hand side, show me a map of the sites the crew hit. So they started at the shop and then they were at Bearcliff and then they were at Acorn Mall and Acorn Mall is actually because we were there twice. The three is under the six. Uh, then we were at Covington. Then we're at Delight Hotel. Then we're back at Acorn Plaza again. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see them working their ways through the shift. That's one way to look at it. You could also do something like crew locations. And I don't have a lot of crews clocked in right now, but this will generate a map of each foreman and where they are on a, uh, on a map. Uh, where are they screen? Well, give me a live picture of all the employees that are clocked in, what supervisor has clocked them in, what time they were clocked in, and what current tasks they're working on. And if I want to see a map of either of those, I can just click the map button. So this is a great way of staying on top of employees. The other one that you can do is a daily dashboard. The daily dashboard is a much simplified view of this, but it basically shows the employee name. And if I click an employee name, it'll give me a time by time breakdown of each in out time from every task they were working on. This is really handy for a quick and easy way of seeing where an employee has been and how long it took them at each site. Now you can actually share the ability to track other employees with foreman as well. So if you have a foreman in the field who should get to know where other crews are so that they can help dispatch and catch up on work. And for anybody who's managing other employees out of their pickup truck, one thing you can do is you can go to the staff menu and you can find the staff that you want to activate tracking for. So for instance, Sam back, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to give him the ability to can track employees. So by turning this on, what I'm going to give is Sam the ability on his timesheets to be able to track other employees and see where they're at. And that can help Sam stay on top of what's going on and maybe even help with dispatching. 
So for example, if I put the phone back up there, here's Sam's phone, he's got two timesheets open. He goes down to the bottom right there and picks tracking. Now, Sam hasn't tracked anybody yet because we just turned it on for him. So he can choose the employees that are underneath him. So let's say uh, Sam should know where Fred is and he wants to know where David is. And he also wants to track um, any employees, Dave Barr there, okay. Now it's gonna show each one of those employees for Sam. The number in the brackets beside them is how many sites they've hit. So he can see that Dave Barr has hit four sites and that's where he's been. And there's the time he arrived and left each site and how long he spent there. And if he wants to see how David Cross is doing, there's David's times in and out and how long he was at each site. So it helps Sam very quickly see where is everybody, how far along in their shift are they, and in most cases, who can I get to go help or solve some crisis or whatever without having to call everybody one-on-one -on -one to get an update. Really, really handy for managing snow and ice on the fly. Back to the screen here. The other thing you can do sort of on the fly with Element Time is, is serve your customers better. And by going to the jobs menu, the jobs menu over here on the left-hand side has a job site history. And this is best used when you're in a situation where a customer calls and says, or maybe you even don't know for the office, but usually a customer calls and says, hey, it doesn't look like you guys have been here yet. What's going on? And they're upset that their lot's not plowed. We can very quickly write with the customer on the phone. Like the old way used to be, we'd have to tell the customer, we'll call them back. I'd have to call my drivers, figure out what's going on. Maybe they answer the phone. Maybe they can't hear the phone because they're out shoveling. There's a hundred scenarios where I didn't get through to them. In this case, I want to eliminate all that and I want to solve the problem or give the customer an answer with them on the phone. When that customer calls and says, where are your guys or have they been there? And my answer is, I don't know, let me call you back. It doesn't sound good for our operations. So right now we can go, well, hang on, let's check. So we'll go job site history. Then what I'm going to do is pick the jobs I want to track and I can narrow it down by job name or by route. So for example, if I just wanted to track Acorn Plaza, I could just type in Acorn there and it's going to come up. And if this info button is lit up green, then it has activity here. So right now it's defaulting to last 12 hours. If I want to see last 24 hours or last two days or last two weeks or whatever, I'll simply change that drop down and get a different perspective as it goes and gets the history. So in this case, last 24 hours, this has gone green. So by clicking the info button, I can see exactly in the last 24 hours, the times and dates we were there, what foreman was there, and if they did any services. So for instance, this one says, well, we were here at 2.41 p.m. plowing and salting with Sam. No notes as of yet. If I look at the one at 4.14, the notes actually say we were there at 4.14 a.m. Sam was there doing plowing. His comments were okay, he had no issues. This was the weather when Sam was there. And while he was there, he did a full plow and, uh, and completed that plow. You can see exactly what's happening live as it happens. Um, our Bear Cliff Mall example, same thing. I'm gonna pull up the info on Bear Cliff Mall. And there, sure enough, we've only been there once in the last 24 hours, but there were 12 cars in the lot. We did a plow and we, uh, we salted the lot as well. So giving you a live picture of what's happening on the job that you can answer to the customer quickly and efficiently and give them the peace of mind that, yeah, you know what you're doing. If you find out you weren't there yet, well, then you can deal with it. We weren't there yet, but at least it sounds like you're in control of your operations and you should be able to find the driver that's supposed to be there with the staff screen. And based on their progress through the route, give that customer an ETA on when they're supposed to get there. Now there is one more way to even more efficiently tell your customer where they are. And that's through job site watch. And if you look on the jobs menu, there's a bottom option there that says job site watch. What job site watch allows you to do is give a customer access to specific sites. So for example, this is a job site watch code I've called Oshawa. It has a very unique code. The customer would get that access code, which would give them permission to see any of the job sites you've added over here. So I can basically say for this customer, I want them to be able to monitor this site, this site, this site, and this site. And maybe it's just one, maybe it's more. You can also ask, uh, determine whether you want the customer to see crew notes and weather notes and equipment notes or GPS records or don't show GPS. These are all options that you can set up based on what you want the customer to see. The customer can then 
through an app on their phone, track their sites. Now, in this particular example I've got here, um, this was done earlier and doesn't reflect what we just did there, but the customer gets a live bit of feedback on what's happening in the field. So for example, they could take a look at any of their sites by simply clicking a name, and then it would load by 24 hours, or by week, or by month, or in this case, I'll back it up to a year so you can see all the dates, exactly what was done and what we did when we were there. So here they can see that on July 29th, we were there at 1053, we did a full plow, the crew notes were okay, and that was the weather. And on July 24th at 1023, we were there. And July 23rd at 1229, we were there. If that customer has a problem with the site, they simply click the menu button in the top right, and they can click send an email or send a phone call or send a text message and it'll automatically bring up the person you assigned to that job site watch customer. Um, so it'll be somebody internal, their account manager basically, whoever internally at your company handles their account. You set up their contact information there and the customer could then enter a text message right there to let me know what they're upset about or what they want to know or what the problem is. But what you're given in Job Site Watch is a live 24-7 method for customers to track the status of their job sites, which is great. And it reduces uh, phone calls to the office um, and, and makes everybody in our company more accountable to actually servicing the customers. But bigger and better in the big picture, the best part about this is that it gives us another tool for selling jobs. When we're struggling to differentiate ourselves against the five or 10 other contractors who might be sniffing their nose in, just ready to cut everybody's price as low as they can get so that the lowest person gets the job. We're bringing something to the table that chances are no other contractors actually bring in. We're going to this customer and saying, we're not perfect, but we're gonna give you a live GPS access to your site so that you can see exactly what's going on and when it's happening. And if it's at two in the morning and you wanna see that we've been there or we were there, Simply log on on your phone and track to see what we were there. And uh, not only are we improving customer service, we're definitely improving our ability to sell the job. We're giving them value add far above and beyond what some of the other contractors are, are going to give them. Um, once we get the customers on the program, we tend not to lose them either. Because once a customer has this, the chances of them going back to Joe Blow snow plowing, where it's all done on paperwork and nobody answers the phone when they call, is chances are slim to none. This just gives that customer that extra peace of mind, that extra accountability, that extra transparency between customer and, and contractor to build that uh, trusting relationship. So in a nutshell, that's how to set up LMN time uh, jobs for snow tracking. You can set up your jobs, you set up tasks and activities based on what you want to track on that job. Uh, employees fill out timesheets as we showed there. And then on the back end, as the jobs happen, you can use the staff and the jobs menu to track exactly what's happening, when it's happening, and who's doing what. The last section you'll want to look there is the reports, and the reports are going to break down information that happens by day, by shift, or by event. Payroll reports are going to help you generate reports for hours worked for payroll. Job reports will help you uh, see what's going on at jobs, either by hours or by tasks and activities. So if you wanted to see, for instance, a uh, uh, a list of uh, work that happened at a specific job. Just do a task, uh, tasks and activities report. And for any date range, and the date range could be the whole season, or it could be a specific event, it'll generate exactly how many hours and how many times we did plows and salts, etc. Now that's a summary uh, look. If you want to see one with, um, with pricing, uh, then you probably want to go to the billing reports, and you can do an activity report uh, uh, billing summary, for instance and we can run that same report. And for any specific date range or for an entire season, we can run a report that shows that we did a full plow and the plow was complete and we did the salting and all the information that we're gonna need to generate a, uh, an invoice for this customer. Lots of different reports to choose from. Those are just a couple, um, but those will give us sort of instant. The minute your trucks are done and the events are over, no more waiting for paperwork you can start doing your billing right away so that you get your invoices in your customer's hands and you get paid earlier. Thanks again for watching. This has been a video on Element Time for Snow. If you had any questions with content in this video, uh, feel free to reach out to us at support at goelement.com. 
We'll help get you the right answer. We'll give you advice on sort of best practices. You explain your situation and we're happy to come up with the best method of tracking that for you. Um, if you'd like to attend more hands-on training, you can get access to any of our workshops or webinars or any of our free training events like the boot camps at our office by going to www.golmn.com slash events. And that'll bring up a calendar and you can see everything that's going on in terms of more hands-on training. Thanks for watching and good luck this winter. Hope you have a very profitable and prosperous snow season.